Hello, Video Game Hunter here, and welcome to another BGH review. So today, I am checking out a product that I meant to review months ago. And the sole reason why I couldn't review it at the time was because that I somehow lost my video camera. So just in case you guys were wondering why I wasn't appearing on camera lately, is because I lost it. But since now I found it, I can finally review this product. And this product I am talking about is the Retron 77 from Hyperkin. That's right folks, I am reviewing another Hyperkin product. Woo! Now what this thing does, it basically allows you to play Atari 2600 games on your flash screen HD television. In which that's one of the sucky things about it is that it only plays Atari 2600 games. Not 7800 or 5200. But is it really worth your money? Um, I guess we just have to go and find out. Now let me show you what comes with the Retron 77. Of course it comes with the system itself. But it also comes with a 128 megabyte SD card. Now, this may not sound a lot, but this is pretty much all you need for this system. Now, I must warn you guys that you gotta make sure this SD card is all the way inside this Retron 77. If this thing is sticking out by even the slightest, this system will not power on and you'll get nothing popping up in your TV screen. Now, it also comes with a Atari 2600 controller, its very own HDMI cable, which obviously mine is still in its bag because I have so many of these things laying around, so I decided to keep this one in its bag and keep it in its box. And of course, it comes with a AC adapter. Now before I go off and show off some gameplay footage to show you guys what this system can do, I want us to take a closer look at the system itself and its controller. Now as you can see, this system is much smaller compared to the other Atari 2600 system, which is great because this thing would take up less shelf space. Now on the front of the system, we got ourselves the player 1 and player 2 port along with the difficulty switch for the player 1 and player 2. Now this system also offers a feature of save states which you can save and load your state but I don't really see myself using them that much because you know Atari wasn't really well known for, for its adventure games unlike the Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Now we also got stuff that we set and mode button. Yay! Now on the back of the console we got yourself of course the SD card slot which of course again make sure the SD card is all the way in and not sticking out or the system will not be powered up correctly. Now you also got yourself an AC adapter port, HDMI port and we got yourself right here a switch buttons which allows you to turn off the color from black and white to color, allows you to change the screen size to 4x3 or 16x9 or fry. Now fry is kind of interesting but I don't really see myself using that much but basically what it does it allows you to glitch up your games. Now for what I understand um, back in the day people used to put in the cartridge in a certain way kind of like in an angle to see all the glitched up mess that the um, game would do. Um, it, it sounds really bad for your cartridge but I was told this is what the kids used to do back in the day, but I don't really recommend doing it on the actual system. Alright, so let's go and talk about this Retron 77 controller that comes with the system itself. Now as you can see is that everything that I hated about the original Atari 2600 controller, they actually fixed on the Retron 77. And one of the things I really hate about the original controller is that when I'm into that intense gameplay moment, the left corner right here will always be jamming my left palm right here. I always feel like I'm going to develop some kind of bruise from it. But what Retron 77 did to actually fix this issue is that they actually smoothed down these corners right here. So when I'm into that intense gameplay moment again, I won't be feeling any pain this time around. 
Now, what's also great about this controller is that it actually has more than one button. Now, on most Atari games that you'll be playing will not require you to use no more than one. Now, the reason why this is a positive is that this controller is actually quite friendly for those who are left-handed and right-handed. Now, some of the games will require you more than one button. And for those games, I do have some bad news about those, which I will get to quite soon. Now, the last thing I like to mention is that the original Atari 2600 controller has a very short core length, which is was never great in my book. Now, what Retron 7 Center actually did is that they made it like twice or twice and a half longer. I'm going to guess about they made it about seven to eight feet long. So if your couch is kind of far away from the television set, now you're most likely to be very comfortable on your couch and enjoying your gaming away from your television set. So I mentioned that I got bad news about games that require more than one button. For example, games like Star Raiders and basic programming. And it's that these controllers will absolutely would not work on the Retron 77. And to make things worse, for whatever reason that you don't like these joysticks, I can't guarantee that other joysticks with the same output will work on the Retron 77. For example, well even though this is not a joystick, but I like to use this Sega Genesis controller and play on my classic Atari 2600. But when I tried it on the Retron 77, for whatever reason, it would not work right when I try to play games like Haunted House. Because when I do try to play it, for whatever reason, my character keeps going like on a down angle and I'm not even hitting the D-pad. It's just what it does. But when I finally get him to move somewhere else, he'll go like up, but once you let go of the D-pad, he'll go back down. So for whatever reason you prefer like a Sega Genesis controller or any other joystick, well, I'm sorry, but I can't guarantee it will work on the Retron 77. But that said, um, let's go and check out some of the games. Hopefully it will play some of my games. If not, I'll make sure I mention them. All right, so now let's turn on the system and now I think is the perfect time for me to tell you guys that just like the Retron 5, the Retron 77 is also a emulator system. You can either take this as a good thing or a bad thing, but as long as I can still play my cartridge, I really don't care. But that said, the emulator they are using is Stella, which I have used in the past without having any issues, but let's see if this version of Stella they are using on the system works well. So the first game we're going to try is Asteroids. And as you can see, the game works just fine. But wait, do you guys hear that? If not, then yes, there is no sound coming out of this gameplay footage. Which is strange because there was sure sound coming out of my television set. But for whatever reason, when I try to capture game footage with my Elgato, it can't detect the sound coming out of the Retron 77. Now there is a way to get around this, but for this to work, your sound system or your television set has to have some kind of headphones plug. And you gotta get yourself some headphones cord to connect to one of your systems straight into your Elgato. Now I'm not sure if um, other capturing cards will have this issue, but if you use an Elgato, I can say this will be the only way to get sound through your capturing card. So next, let's try a homebrew game, MMSBC Lobo RK Expo 2013. And as you can see, for a homebrew game, hey, it works. And that's all I can say, uh, except this game kind of sucks. And the only reason I bought this is because I want to have a memento of my first time attending the Lobo RK Expo. Next, let's try out my favorite Star Wars game. Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. And yes, this game works just fine. If you guys haven't tried this game, you really should. This game is like Defender, except better. 
Alright, so let's check out Breakout now. And of course, it works just fine. And you know what else works just fine on the Retron 77? The original paddle controls. That's right folks, if you own the original paddle controls that came out during the Atari 2600 days, they will in fact work on here. Now you may notice that mine is jiggling at the moment, and that is because I need to clean the inside of my controller. So if you know how to maintenance that, you shouldn't have any issues using that controller on the Retron 77. Now if you don't want to use the paddle control, what the good news is, you can actually use the joystick on the system. Which is optional, but it's not really the best option in my opinion. Next up, let's try one of my rarest, if not the most rarest game I have in my game collection. Pepsi Invaders. And yes, this is a Space Invader clone. Where instead you're defending yourself from alien spaceships, you're defending yourself from Pepsi from invading your territory. Alright, last game. Tooth Protector. The only game made by Johnson Johnson. And it does not work. Like, at all. I even went out of my way and cleaned the pens and cleaned the cartridge. And yet, no luck. Now, there is a way around this, but it's not my preferred way how I like to play my games. First things first, first take out the SD card from your Retron 77 and hook it to your computer. Download any Atari ROMs you want. Put it into the ROM folder on the SD card. Take out the SD card from your computer and hook it back up to your Retron 77. And now, you should be good to go. But the bad news is, at this fine moment, you can only put 20 ROMs on the Retron 77. Yes, it sucks, but at least now you can play your games. So to give you guys my final thoughts on the system, do I recommend the Retron 77? Well, to be honest, not really. I mean, not the way it is right now. Because, um, for whatever reason, when I was capturing gameplay footage, I actually found some more issues. And that is, when I was trying to use a regular Atari to send a controller, for whatever reason, it wouldn't function correctly. And I really did thought I'd try this controller out before I shot my little scene in this video. But apparently, I guess I forgot, and this wasn't function correctly when I was trying to use it on this system. So, if you're gonna be using the system to play some games, you're gonna have to use the controller that came with the system. Which this is not a bad controller, this is actually an excellent one. But, I also have to let you guys know is that, when I was capturing gameplay footage, I did in fact hear some cracking noise. Now, my controller sounds just fine right now, but when I was into a tense gameplay moment, I heard some cracking, so I'm giving you guys a little update on the controllers so letting you know about that. Now, another thing I have to let you guys know is, again, if you're going to be um, capturing gameplay footage for your YouTube videos or whatnot or doing live streams, and you have an Elgato capturing card, Make sure your TV or your sound system has some kind of headphone jack because you're going to be needing a really long headphone cord to connect to your Elgato to your TV or whatever so you can get sound through your gameplay footage when you're capturing it. Which is really a bummer. I wish we didn't have to do that, but that's the only way you're going to get sound out of your gameplay footage. And, well, I also have to let you guys know is that, um, even though most Atari games will work on the system, apparently, um, after doing some a bit of research, this will not work with all homebrew games. Now, the only homebrew game I got is the one I picked up from the RK Expo, and that is kind of old now, so I guess it does work on here, so it's fine. But if you're gonna play some newer homebrews, apparently, the version of Stella they're using. There's a chance it may not work right on the system or work at all. So, letting you guys know about that. However, um, all my negatives can pretty much be removed if this system is somehow modified. Because apparently, there are groups out there are working modifying the system. Or they're actually updating the firmware themselves. 
So if you know how to update the firmware or know how to modify the system, then all the problems I have can be, be gone. It can be completely gone. But I'm no hacker. I'm no programmer. I'm sure I might be able to update the system, but that's all I can do. And if I can update it for me to use other controllers like the Genesis, I, I think I might go to, yes, I kind of recommend it. But as of right now, I can't. I, I just can't. I'm sorry. So that said, this is the Video Game Hunter. And until next time, goodbye. Super Space Invader, coming from the outer space, Super Space